I'm gonna show you guys how to recharge a disposable vape pen. Okay, so there's gonna be a few things you're gonna to need to do this. You're gonna need a battery charger. I'll put a link to this one in the description, but as long as you have something similar that you have some alligator clips for, it should work fine. I would recommend having gloves because there's usually e-juice on the inside of those things that have leaked out and get all over everything. Gonna need a way to remove some plastic from the batteries. This is just a X-Acto knife that I have. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And I would also recommend having some paper towels on hand again for the uh, e-juice that uh, leaks out inside of those things. Okay, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is take the mouthpiece off. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. You just take your thumb, put it on the edge, apply pressure, and that will come off. Set that off to the side. And then you're gonna turn it upside down and give it a little shake to get the uh, top of the e-juice tank right here out. And then you're just gonna give it uh, a pull. It might take a little bit of pressure. Pull it out and the assembly is going to come out. So you've got your tank with your heater element in there connected to your battery there. And then on the end cap, you have a little, uh, I'm not sure if that's a pressure switch or a vacuum switch or hell, those might be the exact same thing. I'm not sure. So on the pressure switch side of the battery is gonna be your positive connection right there. And then on the tank side is gonna be your negative connection. So I've already done this one, but this step, you're just gonna take your little X-Acto knife. I would recommend using a clean one. I'm not actually gonna use this one. This one's done after this. I'm gonna throw it away. I'm just doing this as an example. Take your knife, there's gonna be yellow, kind of clear plastic on top of the, uh, the connector there. So you're gonna peel that plastic back and then you're gonna fold this little tab up like this. Fold that back and then you're gonna repeat on the opposite side. You're gonna peel this plastic back to expose the connection, that little connector right there. And then you're gonna peel kind of peel that up right there. And that's gonna be so you can grab it with the alligator clips. So you can see your positive connection on this side, I've got peeled back. And then your negative connection on this side, I've got peeled back. So then you're gonna wanna connect your alligator clips coming off your battery charger to the connections. So remember the positive connection is gonna be on the pressure switch side. So you're gonna clip that there, being as gentle as you can. And you're gonna flip it over and connect your black lead to the negative side, just like that. So you got positive on the switch side, and you've got negative on the tank side. So then you're gonna to wanna to turn your battery charger on. You're gonna to wanna to go to the LiPo charge option. You wanna be at about a half an amp and you wanna have it set to 3.7 volt 1S battery. And if you don't buy this charger, if you've got another charger, you know, the screen may look different. You may have different buttons, but those are the settings you want. About a half an amp under LiPo charge and a 1S 3.7 volt battery. So then we're gonna go ahead and hit start. It's gonna check to make sure you have the polarities correct on your alligator clips, and then you hit start. So on this one, you can see that it was already at 4.14 volts and now it's showing at 4.2 volts. So if this were a dead unit, then it would have been showing around 3.4 volts is typically when the, uh, the Kang uh, one sticks kind of stop working on you and you get the, uh, the blue flashing light and it won't, uh, it won't activate anymore. So at this point, um, this is a smart charger. This is the one I recommend. So when this thing gets to a fully charged 4.2 volts, the charger itself will stop charging right now. You can see it's, it says 420, ha, 420, but it's not at a full charge because it's giving it uh, 0.4 amps at the moment. But this'll time out once it detects a full charge. And you can actually see on this charger how long it's been charging and then the milliamp hours that it's added back to the battery. 
So I believe these are either 1900 or 2000 milliamp hour batteries. I'm not sure if it says on there or not. Yep, let's see. So it's an 18350 lithium polymer battery. So it's actually a thousand milliamp hours. But anyway, your smart charger will charge until it detects that the battery can't take any more charge, at which point it will cut off. Okay, and for reassembly, you just reverse the process. What you're gonna wanna do is you should be able to see three sets of two holes all the way at the bottom of the uh, interior of the barrel. You're gonna wanna take one of the, uh, oops, sorry for shaking guys. There's, so you see the three holes on the top cap. You're gonna wanna line one of those three holes up with one of those sets of two holes. And you're going to insert the top cap make sure to oh sorry we're way down low take and tuck your wires in down the side and then feed the assembly back down in there give it a little push to seat that top cap it's just pressure fit and then you're going to take your mouthpiece line it up however you want it and force it back in and again that's just a that's just a pressure fit and that is how you disassemble, recharge the battery, and then reassemble a Kang Vape one stick. All right, and then just a quick disclaimer on this. If you're not comfortable with electricity or the process of recharging lithium polymer batteries or any batteries for that fact, don't attempt this. I haven't personally had any issues doing this, but you know, you could always run into trouble and put yourself in a dangerous situation. So be safe when handling and recharging batteries.